After Mars, it's the moon, but this time it's going to be a manned mission. Headlines today has learnt that ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization and the Defense Ministry have signed a memorandum of understanding for India's manned moon mission. The MOD has tasked the Indian Air Force to identify the qualitative requirements for the crew. The Director General Armed Forces Medical Services is to draw out the requirements. The process will include identifying five most suitable men for the mission. ISRO has tasked the IAF with the task to identify five men for this mission. The Indian Space Research Organization and the Ministry of Defense are working together on sending a man to moon. To tell us more about India's first manned mission to moon is the Director General of Armed Forces Medical Service, Air Marshal D.P. Joshi. Also with me is Air Marshal A.K. Behel. DGMS Air. Uh, Air Marshal Joshi, tell us more about what this manned mission to moon is all about. Thank you. At this present time, we are not very sure as to what details will be worked out in due course of time. As far as we are concerned, we have been given the responsibility of se selecting a uh, person who can be sent in a manned mission to moon. We will be responsible for selecting the person, making sure that he is updated on all the aeromedical and space requirements when he goes there and the effects of space which he has in that particular environment. Okay. Uh, Air Marshal Behel, what does it take to send a man on moon? What kind of person are you looking for? A fighter pilot, engineer or maybe an Aam Admi? Um, uh, you see, we have to understand what are his requirements of a human being on Earth uh, when he goes to the moon. One, he, is, he has to sustain a lot of acceleration. Then he has to be in a very rarefied atmosphere in microgravity or near zero gravity situations. So the person which we intend, we intend to evaluate anybody, you know, you said Aam Admi or pilot or engineer, we will evaluate him so that he passes uh, all these tests with flying colors because our purpose is to send a fit person in a safe uh, way and uh, he should be able to complete the task and the mission over there. Okay. Now, the Indian Space Research Organization wants you to draw out the, the air staff requirements. So what is expected of a man? What kind of an environment will he be? What is it that you've been working on on this moon mission? In fact, uh, the first step was to get into the understanding of the space lights and research organization. And secondly is to get the right type of equipment. I mean, the right type of equipment has already reached the Institute of Aerospace Medicine in Bangalore. And uh, we are now evaluating a lot of things, the physiological parameters, the skeletal parameters, the laser parameters of his anthropometric bodies, because space is a very close, the spacecraft is a very closed area. And then we require a person to be fitting into those areas, so lots of parameters are being measured. And all these will be evaluated, and after that, selection processes will be carried out based on medical. Okay. Uh, Amash Behel, do we have a timeline? Uh, this is uh, said to be a 10,000 crore rupee project uh, sending a man on moon or a woman on moon uh, as the case may be. Uh, is there a timeline for this? So we've just about started. We start, had a MOU with the ISRO uh, recently. We have just uh, got the equipment. At the moment, we are doing uh, verifying our data that all the parameters which we want, are they reasonable, are they this thing? So we are verifying their data. We've also sought uh, inputs from other countries which have sent people into space. So we've got those data. Now we are in the process of verifying this, as and when they so finally comes up with the vehicle and the plan to send up the moon, we'll be there ready to evaluate the person and we will be along with them in sending the man on the moon. Excellent. Now, we Commander Rakesh Sharma, uh, again an Air Force man like you, uh, like both of you, was India's first man in space. Uh, so, will it be an Air Force man uh, who, who will go there, uh, perhaps a fighter pilot or an engineer, or can it be a civilian? This is a very good question. See, uh, if you see all the manned space uh, flights, whether they are states or the Russian ones, they have always been headed by a fighter pilot. Because I think, personally, he is the commander of the aircraft, and the landing and, take, and taking off things are known best to him. The other members of the team can be a doctor and an engineer who can do on-course repairs if necessary. And there will be scientists who will then evaluate what is to be done at that particular place. It will always be probably, probably a team which will look after the space requirements. Okay. Now, for the mission, for now, the effort has started. Work. This is work in progress, but at this stage, the first effort sources in ISRO tell headline today is to send an unmanned mission on moon, a robotic mission, 
wait for parameters and then send man on moon and our guests on the show as air marshal joshi and air marshal behar are telling us for them the work has already started with cameraman parvinder sharma in delhi gorav savant headlines today in fact uh, wing commander rakesh sharma who gorav just spoke about is with us on the phone line so what an exciting prospect that we'll see another air force man in uh, space soon and likely to be a part of india's moon mission well i must say that i have been uh, waiting a long time to hear this news in fact five years ago there was some talk already that the whole project has been sanctioned but for some reason it has been in cold storage up to now so it it's uh, certainly uh, very exciting to hear that it's being restarted and uh, i think uh, these are exciting times for those aspirants who are going to go through the uh, selection process and uh, i can only tell them that when they make it through it it's going to be a very rewarding experience at taking part in the space Now, just to be speaking, sir, how soon do you think uh, this ambitious dream of uh, our country can really materialize? Well, um, I don't know how uh, it is being said that we are preparing crews to go to the moon, because uh, I guess this, this will have to be a, a, a very cautious journey toward that. In that, that first we have got to have. the launcher capability which we presently have not yet tested then then we need to have a man rated uh, systems which we need to test and after that we will need to send our uh, astronauts into near earth orbit before we shoot them off the moon so um, in to my mind this is going to take some and some doing is going to take some while Final question to you wing commander uh, Sharma this is the final frontier how do you see india's journey as far as all these missions are concerned we've truly made our mark for a developing country we've made our mark proven that we are right up there when it comes to these achievements sir well i i i would say that uh, i've always been an admirer of uh, what is so has achieved and what they have achieved thus far is uh, truly impressive in the sense that uh, they have remained focused on applications technology and they have today earned the respect of the uh, community uh, globally in the sense that we are running a very successful space program on a shoestring budget and we are doing it all on our own so given that background i have no doubt that we shall continue uh, to face success in our future endeavors and uh, therefore i am about to be a proud indian i am really expecting much much greater glory for isro in the years to come and i am really excited that this whole uh, initiative has uh, restarted and I, and i just wish it all the very best thank you commander rakesh sharma the first indian to fly into space thanks so much for speaking to headlines today i want to get a quick reaction from headlines today's editor strategic affairs gorav savant as well who's broken that story remember you heard it first on headlines today what exactly is the plan going to be like from here on gorav but mujhe at this stage the air force also very cagey in sharing information this is at a very preliminary stage just as yet the indian space research organization has asked the indian air force to prepare the air staff requirements the qualitative requirements who is the best man the man best suited to go in space and land on moon the timeline of course uh, the air force not very clear about it or not willing to share many details uh, the timeline from what sources the air force have told headlines today is around 2015 16 they would send an unmanned mission to moon a robo would be uh, sent on moon and a lot of parameters would then be checked uh, based on this unmanned mission to moon that is priority 1 should that mission be successful stage 2 is a manned flight to moon for which preparation has already started there's a lot of equipment that has already been imported from uh, from several countries in the world including russia and the united states where such uh, such exercises have already been carried out in the past there are studies from their uh, experts are also being called in from there to to take advantage of their knowledge and to gain from them
The Air Force is extremely serious about this operation. Preliminary exercises have already started at the Institute of Aviation Medicine and Aerospace Medicine in Bangalore because they are best suited for this job. More than that, the Air Force said, by and by, out of this 10,000 crore rupee project, hmm. the initial payment of 10 crores has been made. The process has just started, but this clearly, Padmaja, is no flight of fancy anymore.